On our last episode, from 100 to 26, we set off on a month-long adventure. Can our Regal 38XO be comfortable for a trip this long? We say goodbye to six friends, we visit Cape May, we don't enjoy the New Jersey Intercoastal, and finally we decide to head back to St. Michael's after the weather gets the best of us. Join us for the second half of our trip. Here we go. Set off from Ocean City, New Jersey on this non-stop trip covering 172 miles, which we'll complete in five hours. On the first leg of the trip, we head out into open water and head down the New Jersey coast to Cape May. All right, so we're on our way from Ocean City back to St. Michael's, Ocean City, New Jersey. No, it was Ocean City, New Jersey. I know that. We need to start over. I know. I, 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 I like it having banter on our channel, Ocean City, New Jersey. And I already pointed out this earlier today that not to be confused with the Ocean City, Maryland in any way, shape, or form. Not to offend anybody who lives in Ocean City, New Jersey. As we come into Cape May Channel from the Atlantic Ocean, conditions start to deteriorate with visibility decreasing to less than a mile. And yes, as we hit open water again on the Delaware Bay, we do pick up speed again. Now, ahead of you, if that's okay. Um, proceed again, 12 miles, so we should get there. No problem, uh, we'll, uh, slow down, and I, uh, two on a boat, twins to serve, and front to speed, and then he says, this is, uh, over this way. Check the boat, pass behind you. Uh, I have you with my, hey, I, thank you. Okay, Roger, I got to see you out here. Proceed ahead of you. What's out there? A boat? Oh, oh my gosh, that's a boat. Yeah, there's a boat right past us. <laughs> I can't see anything. Modern technology. As we continue to run north on the Delaware Bay towards the CND Canal, conditions improve dramatically as we enjoy totally smooth conditions. Is the 38XO an open water boat? Ocean boat? Yes but it's not really that comfortable for our dogs and that sort of thing. Um, I'm not sure if I would take it that much in open ocean. And we're talking like 20, 30, 40 miles off sea. Would I do a quick dash for the Bimini or something like that? Sure, that sort of thing. But um, it's more of an inland cruiser. I think the hull shape does really well everywhere else. But uh, you know, today we had two to three foot um, swells now we're at about seven second period, so not really like massive kids conditions, but it was, I would say, would you say it was comfortable? It would have been fine if I didn't have to hold two dogs. Yeah, so see, that's probably, we have to hold, the Amanda has to hold two dogs. And you know, they're they're uncomfortable, they're moving all over the place and that sort of thing. And you know, it's just not pleasurable for them. Uh, and they start panting and everything else. So anyhow, so that's, that's our feedback so far. We continue through the CND Canal where we turn south on the Elk River that leads us to the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, getting into dusk mode now at this point. The Cyanic system's up and running. You can see the difference of what you're looking at there. Much better picture. 
It was a nighttime arrival in St. Michael's. After five hours of being underway, we burned just under 300 gallons of fuel and averaged 34.5 knots. St. Michael's is one of our favorite cities on the Eastern Shore. For history buffs, the town of St. Michael's dates back to the mid 1600s when it served as a trading post for area tobacco farmers and trappers. During the War of 1812, St. Michael's gained its name as the town that fooled the British. The residents of St. Michael's having been forewarned that the British barges were positioned on the waters, ready to attack with cannon fire, hoisted lanterns in the trees above the city. The first successful blackout fooled the British into overshooting the town's houses and shipyards. Only one house, forever since known as the Cannonball House, was struck. St. Michael's has streets lined with great shops and several great restaurants. The Chesapeake Maritime Museum is one of our favorite destinations at St. Michael's, and for boaters, you can dock at the museum and even stay overnight. One of the most impressive things I got to experience there was going inside one of Chesapeake's lighthouses. Welcome back from 126. We are about two weeks into our trip. Uh, I would say that this boat is absolutely doable for a month. What do you say, Amanda? Yes, now that we have figured out that going south in April and May is better. <laughs> so, so okay, the key to the, the, this boat is running in a warmer weather where you can use the aft deck. If it's rainy and nasty and cold up, <coughs> it's it's not the best because you start to get a little bit of cabin fever, but really that's any, any boat. So I uh, wanted to give you a quick update now that we're halfway through the trip with some of the issues that we've run into and some of the things that we're uh, dealing with right now. Uh, so but we've had two issues uh, occur while we are underway. Uh, the first one being um, our hot water heater has become intermittent. Um, we believe it's a little uh, electrical fault with the top of the system. It works about 90% of the time, but 10% of the time, usually on the cold nights when you're really rainy and soaked after you take the dogs out is usually when it doesn't work. Um, so we're having that replaced. Uh, Regal overnighted a uh, um, hot water heater to us and, and so we're getting that replaced right now. The other thing is is we had an uh, intermittent fault with the generator where uh, the generator system has been saying check fire uh, detect system and it's shutting the generator down. Uh, so when that occurs, it usually occurs at the most inopportune time. You just lose the generator, which means all the air conditioners shut off. You don't lose autopilot. You don't lose everything, anything else, because all that's uh, being fed off the house batteries and being charged by the engine. So it's not that big of a deal. It occurred a couple of times on the way over here from um, Ocean City, uh, but we're getting that taken a look at right now as well. Okay, so we got the water pressure, water pressure off. off. Uh, you might you want to maybe turn the faucets down. Yep. Shorty, who uh, is the technician for AMPM Marine, doesn't want to be on camera, so I figured I would ask him some questions off camera. Shorty, how long have you been with AMPM Marine? About 23 years. 23 years. I mean, that's what I love about AMPM Marine. It's it's to have somebody. With that kind of experience um, as a technician, uh, he knows these boats inside and out. It's absolutely amazing, but he doesn't want to be on camera, which I understand, and I respect that. Charlie, are you trying to help out? Hmm? Are you trying to help us out? You can't come up here. No, you can't. No, you can't. My name's Charlie. My name's Charlie. Hi, Charlie. I thought Shorty was going to drain the hot water tank, but what he does is he uses the vacuum on the the outlet portion and he pushes the water out the back of the boat. Kind of cool. You get me now, I don't care, you're good. Okay. It's super light. Mm -hmm. Damn, this thing is like, what are you saying? And look, this thing is pretty light. Like a keg? Uh, no, yeah, I don't know anything that. about kegs, <laughs> and I truly don't. Amanda can attest to that. I was a master keg stander in college, <laughs> and maybe high school. <laughs> Wait, that thing's got turned. If you want to make it super hot, yeah. So what we're doing is just changing the plumbing from this one over to the new one, and then we're going to install it. I just can't believe it. 
New water heater. Yay! So this is new boat fun, and everybody should be prepared to enjoy this sort of activity when you have a new boat. Uh, but this is all part of the series, is to show you as we go through a new boat, taking delivery of it, what things work, what things don't, things happen. Uh, you, you do a couple of uh, trips on the boat, and you, you rattle the hell out of the boat in, in bigger seas, and things loosen up. You have components that uh, don't work. Uh, or end up failing. Uh, that's just uh, all part of the game. I guess it's probably a pretty good thing that those aren't that heavy. Yeah, that's right. God, it just fits right down in that little hole. But I still think they could have put the bigger one in. Uh, the, the bigger one, this is 11 gallons. The bigger one is only like four inches larger. You think you have four inches down there? For height? No. Oh, like width? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to push it back this way, the, the straps, so you, um, probably do. Yeah? Might be two and a half on that side. Two and a half on each side? Yeah, because it, it goes into the V right there. Right. Huh. Okay, the most difficult part of any boat experience is making a boat bed. If you haven't experienced that before, I don't recommend it. It's not fun. So we're sitting here at the dock in this older hundred footer um, sanctuary pulled in behind us, right? So they're trying to run because they have electrical problems. We just found this out after the boat almost caught on fire. I didn't, I wasn't able to bring out the cord right away. I mean the, the camera right away. But they're trying to feed this entire boat back here with a 50 amp cord. And they're obviously pulling too much power through it. The Stu told us back there that they're uh, they're having electrical issues and they've got a bunch of stuff sh shut off. And the captain said, "Don't cook anything on board unless you let me know." So then I know to shut other things off on board. But they're running this entire boat with the same power that <laughs> the amount of power that we're using to power our little boat. It's that hundred foot boat. Well, you know, the the shore power cord just caught on fire. You know. And so when you see these big boats, I'm going to tell you this right now, we had more than one person who interviewed for a job for us when we had Bravo that told us they wanted to get off of boats because they almost sank. 100 foot, 125 foot, engineers didn't know what they were doing, everything's run on a shoestring budget. You know, this is a charter vessel behind us, so it's probably run on a shoestring budget. You can kind of see, you know, the fenders are all tattered and everything like that. You know, people get into bo owning these boats and they just don't realize how much it takes. And here's a situation where they could have literally caught the entire marina on fire uh, because the captain's using some piece of old junk 50 amp cord trying to run an entire 100 foot boat off of 50 amps, which 50 amps is what we used here. If it wants single 50 is what we use on this boat. On Bravo, we used to use dual 100s. So he's trying to use a quarter of the power to run that entire boat. Amazing. Amazing. Well, welcome back from 126. I'm sitting in our LAS uh, because I have to change the pump. Specifically, the Reverso. That's really not a pump, it's anyhow. So that's one of the things you have to do when you're a boat owner is you have to change things. Even on a new boat, you could wait until you have uh, uh, a service guy come out and change it out. But on average, uh, you know, it's something that you gotta learn as a boat owner. So you gotta see what, um, how he changes pump out. It's probably gonna take me about 10 minutes. I always keep three pumps, uh, three pumps on board. Actually, two pumps uh, in this boat. Uh, the first is the raw water pump, which feeds the air conditioning system, and the second one is the fresh water pump. So there's two really critical pumps, and they tend to go out quite a bit. So it's uh, something that you really need to to learn to do is change a pump. Uh, remember, in boating, you don't use uh, uh, wire nuts. And that's a no-no. Yeah. How's the trip going? We're coming up to three weeks. Three weeks now on the boat. To be honest with you, it's a, it's a very livable boat. Uh, you know, not long term, obviously, but a couple of weeks here and there. Um, it's it's definitely a boat that you can you can spend some time on.
also running the pump right now. It seems to be running. I wanted to do a quick leak check to make sure all my fittings were correct. So it looks like we're back in business and the... It feels like the, uh, the engine's starting to flush. Job done. Yeah, kind of the fun part, putting everything back together. Boat projects. You just can't get away from them. Like I said, could I have called the technician to come over here? Yes. Or something that's not critical because it's an engine flush system. You know, I can't expect them to jump on it right away. For me, I take a little bit of my, my time to realize what tools I don't have and what tools I need to get in order to continue to work on things. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I don't really mind this kind of work. I get tired of it, though, on Bravo. There's just so much of it. You know, I used to say if you didn't find something wrong with your boat today, you didn't look, you didn't look hard enough. That's so true with that. So this boat's a lot easier. It's easier to get to everything. And there's just not that much of it. What not to do when you have a brand new 80 foot Fleming. I tell ya, this is impressive. That is impressive, ladies and gentlemen. No fenders at all. They've been sitting here for four days. Brand new Fleming. Yep, that's a life jacket. Hi, Charlie. Good morning. Hi, little girl. Oh, one of the important features that I think Regal has really done a great job with is how they have incorporated stairs into uh, the boat. So we're at a, obviously, a fixed pier right now, and we're at a mid-tide. And if you notice here, this is the step here. You have the ability to step here, or here, or there, and you have a pass-through right here into the rear cockpit area. So let me step back so you can see this on how they did this. Now here's the side of the dock. They have stairs going up the side here in order for you to get off the side, but if you want to come to the rear cockpit area through this path through here, so you can kind of see now, he's sitting there. Maryland experienced a wetter than normal spring and early summer, and well, sometimes fixed stocks are not the best. The service from St. Michael's Marina staff is exemplary. First by Chris. Now that is service. So we needed a tender for our boat as putt-putting around on our tender is one of our favorite activities. After extensive research, we settled on the true kit tenders. We went with a three meter tender or nine foot tender with a 2.5 horsepower Suzuki engine. So the key is you gotta blow it up in a certain order. So you kind of get the, the edges kind of blown up. It's, it's not that heavy at all. I'd say it's about 30, maybe 35 pounds. And then you gotta blow the floor up and then I'll blow up the rest. Uh, but before you blow it up the sides, you decide how many seats that you want in it. So this is how the seats go like this. Which is kind of cool. I say put both in. Or do you think I'm going to sit? How do you think I'm going to sit? You want to sit like this? Yeah, probably. Charlie, can you relax, dude? Thank you. Okay, so what do you think that was? I think it's probably 10 minutes total from taking it out of the LAS, getting it out of the kit, and blowing it up. Yeah, absolutely. I would say it's super, super It's no easy. more than 10 minutes. I mean, this is super easy. It's super light. The quality of this thing is just unbelievable. It just really is. I'm really impressed with it. So, yeah, True Kit Tenders out of Australia, I gotta say, they, they, do, they build a pretty nice product. Now we gotta mount the engine. Oh, yeah, that'd probably take about a minute. Yeah, all I gotta do is get a little bit of gas. I gotta get like three quarters of a gallon, which 
lasts forever. I don't know what's going on with the dog. It's because they see a tender. Oh, they want to go for a tender. Charlotte, ride. stop. <laughs> Charlotte, oh my goodness. <laughs> So we got our safety check from the Maryland Pokey, <laughs> and everybody's got their life jackets on now, <laughs> <laughs> including the dogs. We are boating safe, but I did get three warnings. <laughs> but one, but one thing I want to point out about the dog life jackets, and this is very important: a life jacket isn't just a life jacket for a dog. You have to have a chin rest because a dog's head wants to go under even if they're floating with the other type of life jacket because it takes a lot of work as a dog struggling in the water to continue to hold their head up so often they drown even in a life jacket because their head goes underwater so a chin rest buys them a little bit more time not a lot we actually knew somebody who lost a dog wearing a life jacket running around a um a boat dock and and he had the life jacket on it didn't survive these float. So if the dogs are in the water, it's something to grab them on for you. Yeah. So what do you what do you think of the tender so far? Um, I like this tender a lot. It's actually I was I'm stumbling all over my words. I'm actually shocked because I thought this was going to be like a rubber raft with a uh, egg beater motor on it, and it's not. It's I mean you can see that we're moving pretty fast, and I mean fast for what you want to move in a tender when you're just going out exploring. This isn't something I would sit on for eight hours at a time like when we had our rigid boats tender, but for a little raft with a little motor to just go troll around like during a holiday weekend or if you're anchored out and you want to rush the dogs over to the to the park to go potty, it's wonderful. I like it. Yeah, it's... Uh, the dogs like it. The, the Suzuki engine, uh, it's really light. Now, we had a friend of ours who was a motor that tried this motor and the Tatsu. The Tatsu is about 15 pounds heavier, and he said it would be really hard to kind of sling it onto the boat. I kind of agree with that. I think this is the heaviest, I think this is only like 36 pounds or something ridiculously, no, 26 pounds, I don't know what it is, but it's, it is a pretty cool little boat, a pretty cool little motor. Um, it's the first time I've been driving a tillered motor, so we haven't been spinning in circles round and round and round, so I've kind of figured that one out. But uh, yeah, no, I, the ten, this, this tender, it reminds me of something that you find on a Coast Guard, would you say so? Like, yeah. On the Coast Guard, like something that you would have the military or... I mean, and it's not quite that, but it's pretty darn close. Pretty damn close. After one month on a Regal 38 XO, we head back to our home port. We find the Regal 38 XO is capable of supporting a couple for an entire month comfortably, but most importantly, it allowed us to make memories that we'll have for a lifetime. Please like and subscribe. Your support does mean the world to us. On our next episode, we run into a very frustrating issue, but you'll have to wait until our next episode to find out what that is.